Hi everyone, this is Teacher Rattel, and today I will be discussing histogram and frequency polygon, the graphical presentations of data. A histogram is a common type of graphic presentation of the distribution of numerical or quantitative data, where data are grouped into continuous number ranges and each range corresponds to a vertical bar. It was first introduced by Carl Pearson. So what's the difference between a histogram and a bar graph? Histogram is a graphical representation that displays data by way of bars to show the frequency of numerical data. Bar graph, on the other hand, is a pictorial representation of data that uses bars to compare different categories of data. Histogram indicates distribution of non-discrete variables, which are continuous variables or measurable values and often includes fractions and decimals and can take any value within a range. For example, the weights of individuals like 40.5 kilograms and 45.6 kilograms. On the other hand, bar graph indicates comparison of discrete variables, which are often countable distinct values like whole numbers. For example, the number of roots in the baskets. Histogram presents quantitative data, while bar graph presents categorical data. The bars in histogram touch each other, hence there are no spaces between bars. Bars in bar graph do not touch each other, hence there are spaces between bars. The elements in the histogram are grouped together so that they are considered as ranges, while elements in bar graph are taken as individual entities. Can bars be reordered in histogram? No. But bars can be reordered in bar graph. Let's look at this example. We have the scores in English test. So how do we create a histogram? Step one, group the data into class intervals. And how do we create class intervals? We have the following steps. Step one is to find the range. The range is equal to the highest value minus the lowest value or score. So 48 is the highest value minus 13. This is the lowest value or score. So 48 minus 13 is equal to 35. So our range is 35. Then, we decide on the number of intervals or number, number of step interval. So the minimum that we can use is 7 and the maximum is 20. Well, the ideal number is 10. So we make use of the ideal number 10. Step 3 is to determine the interval by dividing the range by the number of the interval decided. So the range is 35 divided by the ideal number of 10 so that will be equal to 3.5 or 4. Next step is to put up the class interval, starting with the lowest class interval. The lowest class interval contains the lowest score or the next lower number that is exactly divisible by the size of the class interval. So the lowest score that we have is 13, but it is not divisible by 4, which is ours, the size of our class interval. So we go to the next lower number, which is 12. And 12 is divisible by 4. So we have our lowest class interval, which is 12 to 15. Next, we go to the next class interval. We count 4 steps. So 16, 17, 18, 19. Then the next class interval 20, 21, 22, 23, so 20 to 23. 
and we do the rest until we cover the highest score. Next step is to create a tally to show the frequency of the data into each interval. So we have for the class interval 12 to 15, we have three scores. 16 to 19, we have five. 20 to 23, one. 24 to 27, one score. 28 to 31, three. 32 to 35, five scores. 36 to 39, six. 40 to 43, five. 44 to 47, five. And 48 to 51, two. For a total of 36 scores. <clears throat> Step three is to draw the graph. Plot the class intervals along the horizontal axis or the x-axis. While the, the frequencies along the vertical axis or the y-axis. So bars are as wide as the class interval and as tall as the frequency. Considering the lowest class interval, which is 12 to 15, with three scores. So we have here, the height of the bar is three because there are three scores within the class interval 12 to 15. Then we do the rest with the class intervals. So we have here our final histogram of the scores of the grade six students in English tests. Now we go to Frequency Polygon. Frequency Polygon is a graphical device for understanding the shapes of distributions. It is especially helpful for comparing sets of data. It displays cumulative frequency distribution data in the form of a line graph. So what are the steps in creating a Frequency Polygon? So given the same grouped frequency distribution, let us follow the following steps to draw a corresponding frequency polygon. Step one is to find the class mark for each class interval of the frequency distribution. The class mark is equal to the upper limit plus the lower limit divided by two. For the lowest class interval 12 to 15, so we add 12 plus 15 is equal to 27. And 27 divided by 2 is 13.5. The next class interval is 16 to 19. So 16 plus 19 is equal to 35. And 35 divided by 2 is 17.5. And we do the rest of the class intervals. Step two is to create a graph. Plot the class marks along the horizontal axis or the x-axis, while the frequencies along the vertical axis or the y-axis. Step three, for each class mark, plot the frequency corresponding to it on the graph. So we have the class mark, the lowest class mark, which is 13.5, and we have three for the frequency. So we plot there the dot. Then for the second class mark, which is 17.5, and there are five frequencies for this class mark. Then we do the rest with the class intervals or class marks. Step four, join all the plotted points in sequential order. Connect with a line segment the first point with the second, then a second to the third, and so on. And here we have our final frequency polygon of the scores of grade six students in English class. Here are the key points that we have to remember. Histogram is a graphical representation that displays data by way of bars to show the frequency of numerical data. Frequency polygon, in a, on the other hand, is a graphical representation that shows the cumulative frequency distribution data 
and the shape of data distribution using the straight line segments. And here are the references used in this video. Thank you for watching and hope this video helps. Stay safe and healthy always and see you in my next videos.